In this video we're going to take a look at converting the uh, Turnigy 9X radio using, which normally comes with its own little module in the back there, the Turnigy module, and the Turnigy receiver, the late channel receiver there. We're going to convert this from the Turnigy system, which is, is okay, but it, it lacks a few features like failsafe, and your, your range of receiver options is quite small with the Turnigy system. You can use this 8-channel receiver, or there's a smaller 6-channel receiver, but neither of those are really light enough and small enough for a lot of smaller foam models. But what we're going to do is modify the Turnigy by replacing that module in the back, the Turnigy module, and converting it to the FreeSky system. Now, the FreeSky system has many benefits over the Turnigy system. A little bit more expensive, but it does offer a true user-settable fail-safe, which is excellent for large models, and it does have those smaller receivers that you need for your foamies and your indoor models that you might want to fly at some stage. So we're going to look at how we convert this radio step-by-step, -step, do it yourself on RC Model Reviews. Here is a quick rundown of what you're going to be needing. Obviously you need your, your 9X radio, uh, you won't be needing the receiver because we're going to switch to FreeSky, so you can probably sell that to someone who has a 9X Turnigy radio and doesn't need the extra features of FreeSky. You're going to need a soldering, or as they say in North America, a soldering iron, because they're too lazy to pronounce the L, and you'll need some solder. And as I've said before with my DIY videos, uh, leaded solder is best. Um, forget about the green aspects of the lead free it's just an inferior product when it comes to doing DIY projects so the leaded solder 6040 rosin cord leaded solder is what you really want you'll need some side cutters because we're going to be cutting a few wires trimming things to length nice sharp side cutters are very good they're a valuable tool don't use them to cut piano wire because you will ruin them just for cutting electrical wire you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver so that we can undo the case of the 9x and get inside it we're going to need an electric drill or even a hand drill so we can drill some holes for the LED and the bind button that will be appearing on the top of our 9X radio when we've modified it. Of course, you're also going to be needing a FreeSky system. Now, in the past, converting these to FreeSky was really simple because the module in the back was just a plug-in module. So all you had to do was take out the old module, plug in the new one, but in the new 9X, there's this pesky little cable. This little cable here means you can't just plug in a FreeSky module unless you want to cut that wire. And of course, a lot of people don't like cutting wires that look incredibly important. And once you've cut that wire, you can't go back to the Turnigy system anymore. So this is a permanent conversion. But the other problem is if we just pretended or cut that wire and stuck this module in here, we'd have two 2.4 gig aerials. You see that? There's one on the module and there's one on the radio. So we don't want two 2.4 gig aerials in close proximity because a lot of the energy from your module area will go into the original antenna. So what we're going to do, instead of using a module, we're going to use the DIY kit, the FreeSky DIY kit, which can be had for a very low price. And we're going to basically discard this module and put the DIY kit inside. We're still going to use the case though, so it looks nice from the outside. Put the DIY kit inside and put the aerial up here where the Turnigy one is. So it'll look just like an original Turnigy radio, but it will just be that much more resilient from an RF perspective, from the strength of your radio frequency link. So let's get started and see what we can do. The first step is obviously we're going to take the battery. If you've got batteries in your radio, take them out now because we don't want this powered up while we've got the back off. So the battery just plugs in as you all know. Now make a note, the negative wire goes to the left hand side when you plug it in here because if you plug this in backwards, later on you will make the magic smoke come out and your radio will make a wonderful bookend or paperweight but it will not work as a radio anymore. So we've taken out the battery and now we can use our Phillips headed screwdriver to undo the screws. Now there's two at the bottom and sometimes these are done up pretty damn tight because I don't know the Chinese seem to don't really care much about details so sometimes I've had them actually with these radios where the actual posts that the screws go into have been broken due to the amount of force used by the tiny Chinese ladies and their big manly hands. <clears throat> so here we go. Now by this stage your hands will be really tired from all that unscrewing but the back should simply come free. What we'll also do is just I'll we'll leave the modulum for the time being. We'll take this out now. We're going to stand it up and tip it over so that all these screws fall out. Otherwise, they'll fall on the floor later on and we'll lose them. So there we go. We'll take the screws and put them somewhere safe so we don't lose them later on. I always have a little cup or something I can put these screws in. 
and then I don't find that I've lost them. There's still two in there, but I won't worry too much about that. So here we go. Here is the inside of a 9X, in case you've never seen one. And what I'm going to do now, to make my life a whole lot easier, is there is a little cable that runs, as you can see, from this board here all the way up to this board. And it has a plug on it, so I'm going to take that plug out. Then we can take the back right off. It makes life so much easier. It's not getting caught up on the wire all over the place. Now there is our 9X radio inside. It's a good time to check and make sure that the screws are done up. There's no loose plugs and that perhaps the, the soldering or the soldering is of reasonable quality because sometimes it's a bit variable with these radios. So while you've got the back off, just give it a good once over, give it a good look at and see if you can find anything that might cause you problems later on. But now let's focus our attention on the back of the radio. It has the aerial on it, as you can see, and it has that lead that we've unplugged. And we can unplug the module at this stage, and you'll see that this, this little cable from the module there goes through a hole that they've drilled in the back, through that board, and goes up to the internal antenna here. So we're going to have to disconnect the internal antenna because we don't need it. Now, there's two ways you can do that. You can just snip this wire if you want to, but I'm a little more civilised. I'm going to undo the module, and I'm going to unsolder it, this wire, unsolder this wire from the circuit board in there. The module comes apart quite easily. You simply undo these two screws on the back, like so. And it will then lift up and should, with a little bit of encouragement, the top comes right off. And we're going to use this module. We're not going to use the guts of it. We're only going to use the plastic, and that means we're going to have to mess around here a bit because it's, it's got some kind of silicony hot glue stuff. We're going to take all this guts out because we want the module to fit back in the back and look pretty, otherwise we'll have a gaping hole, and we don't want a gaping hole. Here is some of that little silicon or hot glue I was talking about in the corner here. I'm going to cut that out with my knife so I can prise the circuit board out. A little bit of an operation because you don't want to damage the circuit board just in case you decide at some stage to go back to the... 9x or you can sell this board as a spare to someone who might end up having a faulty one so we just dig away until we get all that horrible hot glue out of the way and once that's done we should be able to start prizing this board you see this board is now this board is now free well, it's coming free i can start lifting it up and i'm going to just going to have to prize away until i get that out Here we go. It's free. It's free. Well, it's cheap anyway. So now I'm going to use my soldering iron and I'm just going to unsolder this wire from the board so that I don't end up with that unsolder. No, tell you what, save us a whole lot of time in this video. I'm just going to cut that wire right there, but it's very close. So I could reconnect it up again later if I wanted to. There we go. We have liberated the 2.4 gigahertz transmitter board from the 9X module. And that means we can take the rest of the module out and we can screw the back back on and the back will go on quite simply and easily just the reverse of how we took it off slots on at the bottom at the top screw it in two screws if you haven't lost them if they haven't rolled onto the carpet and disappeared forever into the black hole that sucks up lost screws there we go now we can pull this wire here out of the hole that it was going through, a little hole there. And you'll find that the module will now slot back in like so. So now our transmitter will still look nice, it'll have a nice flush back, but there's nothing, there's no guts in there, that's just to fill the hole. And now what we have to do is connect our module up to these pins here because this is where all the signals come out and would normally go into a module. Our DIY kit will connect across these solder connections. We just have to know what order to solder them in, and that's what I'm going to show you after we've sorted out this aerial thingy. To remove this antenna, the built-in antenna, there's a little screw in the top here at the back, usually at the back. It's a little, another, again, a little Phillips headed screw. We can remove the screw that goes in there, as you can see, a little screw poking out there. I've just unscrewed it, it's fallen out. Now this antenna should, in theory, come out.
And indeed, it has just come out. I've pulled it out. There we go. That is the old antenna that we will not be using. Our DIY kit, which I will now undo and start to pull the bits out of. And here is the DIY kit itself. Very basic. Circuit board inside this heat shrink wrapping here. We have a bunch of wires come out this side. And a single wire, which is the antenna wire, comes out this side. Piece of cake. Very simple. Now that we have this antenna out, we want to remove this kind of stub at the top as well. So there's a little screw just in here. Tiny little screw. Phillips headed screwdriver. So just undo that screw. Like so. And that will allow you to take the screw out. Right out. Murphy's Law says it's hard to do when you're trying to show somebody. Here we go. And then this whole little top piece will come out as well. Right, so there we go. That's got rid of that. We don't need that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take our DIY module, which has an antenna with a connector already on it. And we're going to uh, slide this portion right up through this part of the transmitting. See, we can get it right up and it'll poke out the top. Isn't that easy? Nice and simple. And that means we can then screw on our antenna to this piece here. You notice there's a little lock nut on the bottom here. Wind that down, but screw the antenna on until it's quite tight, and then back that up, and you can actually just tighten it up so this isn't going to come undone. Well, it doesn't really matter if it does. Then we can slide the whole lot back down through here, and you'll find that it just pushes in. I'll just zoom up on this so you can see what I'm talking about. If I can get everything lined up. One, no cameraman here. It's all just me. So you see this comes down, and it just slides in like that. Once it slid, slid in like that into the little notch that's underneath and a little notch in there you can see it's all sitting nicely so it comes down let me show you again and it slides in like that then the whole thing is actually quite tight it's actually quite a good firm fit in the transmitter as you can see there's there's no wobble it's it's rigid as and so what we're going to do later on is put a little dab of hot glue on there just to hold that in place but it means that now we have that Nice transmitter aerial built in again. In fact, it's a bit more convenient, convenient I think, than the original one because it doesn't have this horrible bulbous piece which served no real purpose at all. So that's how we're fitting the transmitter antenna from the FreeSky module to, well, the FreeSky kit to the 9X. But now we've got to find somewhere to stick this little board and then we have to wire these wires up so that it all works, which is important. And now another thing we have to do is drill some holes so the little LED and the little bind light, the little bind light and the little bind, sorry, the little LED and the bind switch are accessible when the transmitters all put back together because we're going to be binding radios from time to time to this transmitter, binding new receivers. So let's look at how we're going to do that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mount the little switch and LED that this is the bind switch and the range test switch or the power down function for reducing the mod the the transmitter's output for range testing. And this is the little LED that tells you what the status is at the moment, whether you're in the bind mode or the power down range test mode, or just normal mode. So what I'm going to do is, obviously I have to mount this somewhere on the transmitter so I can get at it from the outside. Don't want to have to keep taking the back off every time I want to bind a new receiver or test the range. So I'm going to put it on the top of the transmitter here where it's very, very visible because that means I'll be able to see at a glance what mode I'm in and I'll be able to reach the bind button nice and easily when I want to bind up new receivers. So one thing that's missing from the FreeSky DIY system is a template for the holes because obviously you don't want this looking all bodgy. You want these holes nicely drilled at the right spacing in the right position. So there's no template provided. I'm going to try and do one up and stick it up on the rcmodelreviews.com website. So you can print that out, then stick it over to make your holes in exactly the right place. In the meantime, I have bodged up this, which is a little metal template. And as you can see, it took quite a few goes to get it right because I work in metric and the, these do not seem to be spaced metrically so I've had to um, just trial and error get the spacing right. I've measured it. it's about 8.25 millimeters between centers on these holes. One hole is 3.5 millimeters that's the one for the switch and one hole is three millimeters which is for the LED. Now I'm going to position this on my transmitter where I want the little holes to appear and I'm not going to actually drill them with a drill because it would be hard fiddly to hold this and drill at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trusty soldering arm with its very very sharp point as you can see. I'm going to use that to basically mark those holes so that I can then drill it 
right through with my drill if I want or when I need to. So this is going to take a bit of judging. This is a bit, a bit bodge, but let's go. We can push that in there. There's one hole. And here is the other hole. So there we go. I have now made two holes. In fact, that holds the metal on quite nicely. Two holes in here. They will be for my bind switch and my LED. When I screw this off here, you can see the little holes that are left. Now I'm going to get my drill and drill those out to the right size. First I'll drill the small one, which is the, the three mil hole for the LED. Now, obviously you have to be a little bit careful. You're not going to go right through and damage anything inside. As you can see inside the radio, there's actually not much behind. It's quite clear here. You'd have to go right away through to hit this board. So you can actually do it freehand and just do your best. So there we go, that's one hole. Now I'll change to the three and a half millimeter drill bit for the other hole. And we'll drill this one. Right, there are the two holes that will take the LED and the switch for our bind. Now, you could of course put this on the back if you want to, it's, it's a personal choice where you put that, but I just want mine to be right up front and personal so I can see at a glance what the status of my transmitter is. But now let's look at how we wire this thing up to this board in the back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freshen up the solder on the circuit board here uh, where the pins that would plug into the module normally go. Now you can see I'm just adding a little tiny bit of extra solder there very quickly as I can just so that these pins have nice fresh solder with lots of flux on there so that when I go and put my wires on I can do it without having to use a lot of time or a lot of heat. Now I've also just trimmed those wires a bit and I'm going to put just a fraction of extra solder on the end of the wires just tin them up a bit too because we want to have this as ready to sweat on as possible. So I put a bit of extra solder on there, put on there. Right, so now we're ready to solder these wires, or solder these wires, onto the pins that are here. Now of course, where you put these wires is very, very important. If you put them in the wrong place, it will not work. And in fact, the magic smoke may even come out. So, you will see that the very top wire is for the PPM, the very top pin. The next one is for negative, the negative voltage. And the one below that is for positive. So I'll start with the positive. I just position the wire over the bit I've already added solder to. Just heat it up and voila. The two sweat together very, very nicely, very easily. Then I do the same with the negative wire. Just get it positioned right on top of that existing solder. Add a bit of heat. And it will solder itself automatically. I don't have to add any solder at this stage. That's very, very useful, especially when you've only got one hand because you're trying to make a video. Now I need a bit more solder on the top one there. And I bring my little wire around, position it directly on top of the pin, add some heat, and voila! It too is soldered. So my wires are now soldered safely in place, as you can see. So, what I have to do now is position this DIY board out of the way. Right, now we have our module, it's wired in, but we need to mount it. And if you have a look at the transmitter itself inside on the other half, you can see there's, there's quite a gap in here between the two stick units. And there are some little springy spring things here, which are designed to rub against the back of this board to provide good grounding. So, providing we have our module in the middle so that the spring isn't going to hit it, and high enough that the wires will reach, we can put it probably about here on the backboard. So I'm going to attach it there with some Velcro. Uh, you could use double-sided tape, you could use glue, you could use anything you like, but I want to have enough length in this wire that it can come up and connect to the other half of the transmitter case there. And so that's what I'll do. I happen to have some cheap Chinese Velcro here that I bought from China, which is where you buy cheap Chinese stuff. And I stick it on the back of the module like so. Yeah, the other side off this could be, as I say this could be double-sided tape it could be anything you like anything that will hold the module in place while you're hooking it up now putting the wire out of the way the transmitter wire out of the way I'll try and get this nice and central and away from those little clips that we had there there we go now hopefully this means this will be out of the way 
and I'll still have enough length in this wire here to reach the other half of my transmitter because when I put this all together, remember we drilled a little holes in here before, this should, if I can line it up, fit nicely up here and the two halves of the case go together like that. So, but what I have to do of course is mount this little switch unit in the top of the transmitter. I'm going to do that with my trusty hot glue gun. Now as you can see we've got the uh, little LED and the little switch you can, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's poking up proud enough of the plastic that when I push on it it will click and make contact and there's a little LED that will also be quite visible from the outside. So now I have to position this and glue it in place so that the switch moves freely and is high enough and the LED can be seen. It's going to require a little bit of jigging around with some bits of wood inside the transmitter case. Now I've glued a couple of pieces of wood onto this little board here, just a couple of bolts of wood, you could use anything, you can use plastic if you've got some the right size, and I'm then going to, it's going to hold it out from the edge of the case so that the um, everything fits nicely. I'm now going to insert that into the case and glue it in place with my hot glue gun. All done as you can see, bit of a bodge job but it does the trick, that board is now nicely glued in place and if we look from the top and get rid of all these hot glue stringy bits which are one of the characteristics of hot glue, if we look from the top we can see the switch and the little light. And don't you love hot glue the way it makes all these big strings? Really good. So there we go, there is the installation of our bind switch and our LED. Now while we've got our hot glue gun out, we need to put a bit of hot glue on the antenna here so it won't fall out. Pretty simple, just a little bit around the edge, like so, and on the other side, just enough to hold it in place. That should do it. And we'll let that dry off, or cool down, which actually on a day like today takes a long time. It's pretty warm here today. Hot glue is taking a long time to actually settle down and go hard, but you could use epoxy or something for this type of thing, but I just find hot glue so useful because if you get it wrong, you can actually get it off just with a modeling knife because it always remains slightly pliable. So hot glue is a good way to do things quickly, easily, and in most cases, reversibly. Now we can go about putting our radio back together, the two halves of the case back together. But of course, we, we must remember to plug in this little lead that we unplugged earlier. And it can only go around one way. It's fairly easy to plug in. I don't think you'll have too much trouble. Just give it a push and it shall fit nicely into the board. Make sure it's sitting nice and level and it's all the way in. Now, we just check that our wires aren't going to snag on anything as we put the top down. And voila! The two halves of our case are back together. Of course, we've got to put the screws in, so let's put in the screws. Don't be surprised at this stage if some of these screws don't tighten up because the little Chinese girls have very strong wrists when they put them together, and sometimes they just strip the pillars out, depending on whether you're lucky or not. So there it is. There is our converted 9X transmitter. The only way you'd know it's converted is it has these little button and this little light and the antenna is slightly different, doesn't have that big bulbous bit at the top. So let's see if it will bind up, let's see if it will actually work. Okay, let's go ahead and bind this module, hopefully bind it, to a FreeSky receiver. Now, I've got a FreeSky free receiver here straight out of the box, unbound to anything, and here is our transmitter. So, to enter the bind mode, we hold down the bind button on the top here that we've installed and we turn on the transmitter. Notice now that the LED is flickering. I hope the camera can pick this up, it's not strobing. See the LED is flickering, which means the transmitter is in the bind mode. Now we go to our receiver and we hold down the little bind switch while we turn that on. And hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'll turn it around so hopefully we can get a view of it, like so. Hold that button down, if I can find it. Where is it? There we go. And I turn this on. Here we go, we have flickering light and a green light as well, which means that the receiver should be bound. We'll turn that off, turn the transmitter off, and now I'll plug in a servo. This is a uh, just a regular servo. I'll plug that into channel one, like so. I will turn on my transmitter. Again, we have a red light, solid red light, because it's now working in the normal mode. And I will turn on, put the servo in there so you can see it, turn on the receiver, and hopefully, look at that. It's working. So there we go. There we have it. There is the um, free sky system installed in the Hobby King 9X. Now, 
Of course, why would you want to put the Turnigy 9X, uh, throw out the Turnigy 9X system and put in the Free Sky? I mean, it seems a bit silly, doesn't it? The transmitter comes with a perfectly good 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency system. So why are you going to put the Free Sky one in there? Well, I'll show you one reason why. Let's do this. Let's set the fail safe, which the Turnigy doesn't have. I just hold down the switch. LED flickers, failsafe is now set. That means if I hold the stick over and turn off the transmitter, the servo goes back to the failsafe position. That is really important if you're flying larger models and you may have a, a gas-powered plane. If you go have a problem with your range or get interference, you want the engine on your gas-powered plane to go back to idle or stop so you don't kill somebody if it flies off uncontrolled. Failsafe, very, very important on larger models and faster models if you've got even a fast electric. Um, you want, might want to put it into a flat spin as soon as you lose control, if you ever lose control, so that it doesn't go careering off into a crowd. And the other thing, of course, is that there are a wider range of receivers, as I mentioned before, different receivers you can get. Um, longer range, this seems to have a longer range than the, than the standard um, Turnigy stuff, and also it's much better interference resistance. I mean, I've been flying these now for well over a year, never had a single incident that wasn't my own fault, like using the wrong transmitter antenna. Uh, as you'll see on my exit channel where you can see one of my models fly out of range uh, and come back thanks to the fy21 ap but that's it that's it folks there we are it's a very simple unobtrusive modification see on the back we've kept the module case in there so it all looks very um, neat and tidy and you end up with just the one antenna you don't have a whole extra antenna poking at the back of course if you want to go back to the old system you could do it you could take your module your diy module out and you could put that other thing back in the case, put the antenna back on, solder the little wire on, and you'd be back where you started if you wanted to sell it without the Free Sky. But once you've tried the Free Sky, I think you'll find it's a much better system. Although the receivers are more expensive, you're going to be paying 20 to 25 $30 for one of these eight channel receivers and 20 to $25 for the four channel receiver. But it's your choice. Now I've shown you how to do it. And I should mention that the steps I took here would apply to most DIY conversions. If you want to use a Corona DIY, Although Corona is getting a bit old now, the DSSS system, it's, um, it's not what I would choose for larger models. In fact, I'd say the Free Sky, oh, sorry, the, the built in Fly Sky Turnigy system may even be better than the Corona because Corona doesn't have a failsafe either. But that's it. Any questions, pop them on the bottom of this video and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you've got anything else you'd like to see on RC Model Reviews, just drop me a line and I'll see if I can accommodate you. Thank you for watching. This has been another DIY project from RC Model Reviews on YouTube.